Hi everyone, this is Dan Thompson with Wise Money Tools. So recently I sat down with Devon Kennard, who's an outside linebacker for the Arizona Cardinals. Devon's on a mission, so to speak, to help others become financially educated and making good decisions early on that will help prepare them for their future. He realizes the unique challenges of athletes, and not just in football, but all professional sports. Sadly, even some of the brightest stars end up financially broke. And all that could have been avoided with just a bit of knowledge and setting themselves up for the future early on. Devon spends a lot of time reading and learning and talking with financial professionals like myself who've got specific investment knowledge and specialties. Devon wants to pass on his experience to others in the league, as well as his friends and family, as to some of the things that he's done that's working for him. We really had a good, candid conversation where Devon was able to ask a lot of questions, the same questions that you might ask if you were there. We're gonna break down exactly what it is that we do, that we, we'll break down exactly what it is that we do to help Devon and others like him who are on a quest to be financially free. I hope you enjoy these segments. And then if you want to learn more, there's a link below where you can watch a webinar that my partner and I did just a short time ago. There you'll learn even in greater detail how we've kind of cracked the code to creating wealth safely and tax-free. Enjoy. You know, new guy gets into the league. What's his struggles? Yeah, I would say, you know, the hardest thing being an athlete is um, the education system doesn't teach you a lot about managing money and a lot of times athletes come from a diverse background some come from no money at all some might have come from a little but wherever their knowledge is when it comes to money and finances it's not where it should be um in most cases and then you come into a lot of money so usually you know you go and get a regular job or you know you go down a career and it's usually you progressively grow your yeah. net worth and, and your income you know, being a professional athlete, it's almost instantaneous. You know, you work your whole life and you're, you know, high school, college, but then all of a sudden you're good enough, you make it to the pros and you have hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions of dollars yeah. instantly. And it's like, what do you do? And how do you manage that money? How do you deal with the struggles of family expectations and wanting that money? And, you know, there's things that you wanted in your life that you've always dreamed of having. Sure, sure. And, uh, the first thing you want to do, you see a bunch of zeros in your bank account is to go start to buy those things. So how do you decide when to buy, you know, the things that you want? What do you really need? And uh, it's a struggle, I think. And financial education is becoming a little more popular and there's a lot of seminars on it. And, and you know, being in the NFL, we talk about it more. But to actually apply it when you get in, when all those forces are working against you, it's, it's hard. And I think, I think I see a lot of guys still struggle with that. And it's amazing because as you know, from our conversations, if guys could just take a little bit of that mm -hmm. chunk and get it out of their hands and get it working for them, get it compounding and growing, they could almost set themselves up for life no matter how many years they end yeah. up playing. That, that's a big thing that I kind of have always believed in is like, you know, delayed gratification. You can go and buy the car that you want now, or you can invest it in a, in a way to where five, 10 years down the line, you could buy it with passive income. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, that's a huge component that I think is missing in pro sports is the idea of cash flow. And, um, you know, I, I've always tried to invest that way. And that's, you know, essentially how, you know, we got connected once I started learning about the life insurance stuff, but creating revenue streams outside of my profession, because I'm going into year eight, God willing, I'll play three, four, five more years in the NFL, yeah. but tomorrow could be my last day. And when that ends, all right, I've made however much money throughout my career, but if I didn't invest the right way where I actually have money coming in monthly, a quarterly, yearly, in some some capacity, then I'm I'm going to be draining my principal. And every day, I, every dollar I spend is money. My net worth is going to be slowly dwindling away. And uh, it's not a matter of if I go broke; it's a matter of when. And most guys hope that they're just going to make enough money to where they they're going to out they're going to outlive their spending. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, they're, they're, their spending they're is spend going to outlive them. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Where they're, they're going to be able to spend uh, yeah. till they die because they've made enough. And some guys are lucky to make enough money and, and uh, you know, be and good enough case. to where that is the case. But 
that's not the case for a majority of professional athletes. Right. Even guys who make millions, it's like if you create an expensive lifestyle, if you have a lot of people who depend on you and um, you know, you're not there's more times than not, you're not gonna be able to outlast that. And all of a sudden you're in your late thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, whatever that looks like, and your lifestyles have to drastically change, or you're forced to do things that you don't necessarily wanna have to do and, and it's unfortunate. And I think guys, if you invest in a way where you have that passive income and multiple revenue streams coming it's like all right you invested your money properly you're able to maintain the lifestyle that you set for yourself without taking away from your principal and I, yeah. I think that's like the key strategy and when I've met with a lot of different people who are successful it seems like that's a part of their financial plans yeah no question about it and, and I think you hit it right on the head I don't even think high school kids know how to write a check or um, you know, you, you're fortunate enough that you got your scholarship and you got to go to school without right. that costing you anything. But the debt that some of these guys, you know, may have went through just to get through the college. Right. So now they come out, they make some bucks. You know, they've got debt hanging over their heads. What comes first? And then, like you say, the things get in the in their eyes and, you know, the nice cars and toys and so forth. So it is a lot of pressure. And if they just... Um, and I love what you're doing. I love mm -hmm. that you're wanting to educate as many people as you can and, you know, help people understand right away. The sooner you go, the sooner you invest, the longer you invest, the more it compounds, the more passive or mailbox income. Yeah. And that's, and that's what I like calling it, you know, mailbox money. And, and you know, th there's that like adage that goes like cash is king. And, and I've kind of added to it. And I think cash flow is king. And cash having, flow is king. having cash flow and having passive income, what, what I always call mailbox money, it's, it's so important. And people think you have to have a ton of money to, 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 um, to generate, you know, to that. generate that. Right. And that's not always the case. I think every person, no matter your profession, you should be g trying to generate mailbox money you should be trying to uh, have that passive income coming in and uh, you know there's steps that you can take and investments that you can you can do that will do that for you and I don't think enough people recognize that and and dive in they, so they just get into their nine to five and this is how I'm gonna make money well you know you could be uh, a doctor and still own some real estate still invest in life insurance policy still do certain things that's gonna end up generating you the more, um, more, you know, income. more, more income. And to where now you give yourself leverage to where you're retiring or you're doing what you want to do, not what you have to do. And I think that's, that's the point where I would like to see more Americans, uh, in general, more, more African Americans and uh, minorities view it that way. And more athletes just, there's so many, uh, different groups of people that need to start thinking about financial, financial independence in that kind of spectrum. You like, uh, so many times people think it, they have to be someone like you to be able to, to do that. Someone like me, anyone can generate passive income. Anyone can create the life that they want to do uh, have. It just takes time. And the compound sure. effect is, is really important. Well, and, and I grew up with nothing. I mean, we were, we were poor. Mm -hmm. We were, uh, I mean, I remember, I remember being on welfare a couple of times. Right. And, and, but when I was 15, I heard a guy who was investing tell my dad that he made $30,000 that month. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, somebody made $30,000 in a month, you right. know, they just blew. And, they, and he said that he did it through the stock market. So event, so that's what I'm 15 years old. I got to be a stockbroker. Right. That's I, and all I wanted to do is learn, 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 learn. And the sad part is, is traditional financial planning, let's just say, has some, you know, has some good key concepts. But to do what you talk about doing, you've got to you've got to rise above what just traditional financial planning is. You've got to do some research and understand. And, and uh, I mean, you've done a great job in that. I yeah. think I think that's an exemplary of uh, of any athlete. It's funny because uh, just the other day I was looking, I just kind of Googled athletes that have gone broke, mm -hmm. you know, there's some big names. Oh, huge and especially name. in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys that, you know, I won't say anything, names, right. but they're bankrupt. They're broke. It's just because they just didn't manage the money right. Or they didn't learn enough to know how it was being managed and somebody took advantage of it. Exactly. And that's why I think it's something that we all got to educate ourselves on and be and have the, um, you know, the knowledge of, all right, how is my money being used? Who's uh, watching my money and understanding it for yourself so often, especially athletes, you, you get 
uh, you know, enamored by these people who come up to you and like, oh, I can give you X yeah. amount of return and and you just trust them blindly. And I, you know, I'm a firm believer. If I can't, if I don't believe it, and if I can't explain it myself, I'm not investing in it. So that's why I ask a lot of questions, and, and I believe there's no dumb questions. And if I ask one question, and you could probably attest to this, I might ask you the we same question multiple right. times <laughs> because it's like, I know you answered, but I didn't fully so understand it, so I'm going to ask it again. Like, and um, but isn't that what an athlete does, right? Yeah. Isn't it just practice, 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 until, practice? Until, just stronger, stronger, stronger. And, and even now, I still ask you questions because it's like I want to get so good with understanding things to where I can explain it myself. So when you articulate it, uh, you know, with the life insurance and stuff to me, I can understand it. But my next level is like I want to keep learning and asking questions to you because I'm not at a point where I feel like I can regurgitate it to uh -huh. someone else yet right. and in a way to where and really answer you know, questions sense. and make it sure. make sense and and things. So um, but it's taking the time and being willing to be, um, you know, a learner and, and be like, hey, hey, I still don't get it. Can you explain this to me again? Can you teach me this or what's going to happen if this happens? And and, uh, you know, that's how you just slowly chip away at it. And and by having that mentality, I feel like I've grown so much in the last few years of learning about, fi you know, financial literacy and and investments and things like that. You know, one question I have for you, though, is like because you have your stock market background and I'm like I have in, innately like the stock market is tough for me because it feels so speculative. Like mm -hmm. I have friends who uh, right now we're going through the Bitcoin and the, and yeah. the AMC and Blockbuster uh, with the Blockbuster or the GameStop. GameStop. Yeah. GameStop just happened. And I know people who made a ton of money and are making a ton of money in Bitcoin right now. And that's great. I'm happy sure. for them. Cool. But like, my, my, like, it seems like unless you're taking that money out right now, isn't it very just like it, it doesn't feel it real. Yeah. It does, it's not real. And then if you take it out now, you're not now that money's not growing anymore. So it's like you almost have to take it out. You could use what you want to use, but then you need to reinvest that Somewhere. to make m more money. So it's like that's where I struggle with the stock market. And not that I don't have any money in it because I do, but I'm trying to like I was I used to be so against it because I'm like it's it's volatile. And overall, I know people have make a, made a ton of money in the stock market. I know over 10, 20, 30 years you should get, uh, you know, a great return and all that. But like what's your philosophy when it comes to stock market investing that that actually you know works in a way to where it benefits you know every everyday people and could benefit athletes, athletes sure. for instance well there's there's investing and then there's speculation mm -hmm. most people are speculation mm -hmm. they don't know they hear oh gamestop's doing great or bitcoin's doing great and they just dive in you know we call it the barbershop um, mm -hmm. advice you're sitting in the barber chair and somebody comes in and says hey GameStop's going crazy and everybody goes and buys it, right? Investing to us is when you really dig in, you know the numbers. And when I when I look at buying a stock, I look like, uh, um, I act like I'm gonna buy the whole company, mm -hmm. you know? And is this company worth buying at this price? So you just gotta dig into the numbers. It's not easy to be a true solid, I call it a Buffett style investor. Mm -hmm. You got to dig in. You got to do your homework. You got to get after so it. Would you say that diversification is is important then or is it more so like because it almost sounds like like with what you're saying, you got to find one company that you do your research on and then you invest in. But I know some people was like, you got to put a little here, a little there. So what like what would you say? Yeah, is the so best route? if you know the company, I mm -hmm. mean, there's no real reason to diversify. Now, you know, I, mean, I guess and it also depends on your net worth. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, Buffett has to diversify because he's got so much money, hundred eighty-five like. billion dollars or whatever. He can buy a company, you know, easy. For for the average person out there, though, um, you know, five to ten issues, you know, is, is going to be plenty of diversification. This silliness of buying a uh, a mutual fund or an ETF or some sort of investment that has a thousand different companies in there—that's mm -hmm. speculation. Okay. That's just rolling the, dice, rolling the dice, hoping that as a whole they're going to do okay so what about people who are like oh i'm just going to invest with the s p 500 or take the you know top 10 companies so that's still it's speculative. still speculative but it's probably a i mean i like to bet on america mm -hmm. you know i don't have any problem investing in the s p but it's not really investing it's still letting somebody else you know control your future mm -hmm. so i really like the idea 
of digging in. And then when events happen and things um, go wrong with the company, right. but yet the numbers and everything are still, that gives you a great opportunity to buy. Right. So here's a perfect example. I love, I love Chipotle, right? Mm -hmm. And so I started studying them years and years ago. And wow, this is a good company. They're growing, they're managed well. So started investing in it. Still love Chipotle. But then a few years ago, I don't know if you remember, they almost killed some people. Yeah, with, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if they actually almost killed them. But anyway, a lot of people got sick. Right. And that stock just, boom. Tight. So I do, you know, you just sit there and you look, okay, rationally, is this company still a solid company, going to grow, you know, boom, 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 good management. And this was just an event that, you know, it's going to be fixed. Right. I figured, hey, this, this is going to get fixed. Right. So it was a great opportunity great to just in. buy cheap, 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 mm -hmm. cheap, cheap. And, you know, it's paid off, you know, very, very well. And so when you when you own a company, you've done your homework, and then an event takes it down for some reason, you know, it kind of gives you, right. a, you know, a little bit of a stop of the heart saying, okay, should I still hang in there? Now, so what if in that same case, what if you were a person who already invested in Chipotle or invested a long time ago before that case, and then that happens, it went crashing down. Like, would you say that person, like- Just like hang if on. If you were you, just, just yeah. ride it out. Ride it out. And hopefully I got a few bucks and take advantage of it while it's down, put in a little bit more. But that's assuming I just still am convinced this is a great company to own. Okay, now what about a, what about a company that's solid? Let's call it Amazon or Apple, solid company, and it, but it's pretty expensive right now. Yeah. Is that- is it good to still get in, do you think? Or so like again, that's whatever the <laughs> price is, or do you, or is it better to like, all right, now you gotta start studying and wait till it does go down? Like, what would you say? Yeah, typically we'll wait. We'll wait for something to, you know, shock the market or, you know, the market as a whole taking a correction, we'll take everything down. Mm -hmm. um, if, if it's not priced as if I could go buy them today mm -hmm. and start making money, I tend to wait. I tend to wait till that, and unfortunately, the Amazon, they just keep on running and uh, sometimes you don't get in them. One thing that I love about this for athletes is we started this conversation and I was talking about mailbox money, talking about passive income and why that's so important for me is I want to know exactly. I don't want my lifestyle to change at all when I get done right. playing and the life that I'm living now, I'm going to be living 15, 20 years from now. So everything, I, everything I've invested in was in line with this of creating this passive income. And now I find this policy with you and I'm like, well, I'm going to be able to everything I've been doing outside of this, I'm going to be able to double Gravy. or triple with like with the, uh, with the life insurance yeah. and work because it because it's not taxable and, and all of those things. So this just speeds up. Yeah. getting you to your to true financial freedom to creating passive income and, and being able to depend on the income that's coming from other streams besides what, what your day job is and i think that could help so many athletes so many um professionals in general who are making good money but don't want their life to be tied to just one profession yeah. like because you know it's tough times right now and, yeah. and anything could happen in, in sport you can get cut any day you could get an injury any day and in, and in the real world your doctor you could get fired have an yeah. injury anything could happen so sure. to know that you have this i think it's really important and uh, i hope we can we can share this with more people and get more people to join nice solid base <laughs> awesome good to talk to you next time i'd love to talk about the comparisons talk about what happens in 401ks and IRAs and all that stuff yeah. and just so get a real good picture of really how powerful this is. Absolutely. Awesome, man.